Most people can't stand change. Most people are afraid of change, the thought of change. Now, once change happens and we see that it's good, then we're like, oh, I love change. Yeah, it's good, right? Once it's just, it's not this, it, it, you know, huge, just, just, oh, catastrophic. And we see that it's good and good has come from it. Then, then we, we back up and we exhale and then we jump on the change bandwagon. No big deal. But not leading up to it. Change is hard. Even change that we prepare for is hard. Something that's uncomfortable, but it's also necessary. i share a scripture with you just really quickly in Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. This is out of God's Word translation. And it says this, Forget what happened in the past, and do not dwell on events from long ago. He says, I'm going to do something new. I'm going to do something new. It's already happening. Don't you recognize it? I will clear away in the desert. I will make rivers on dry land. Now, the writer here is not simply saying forget your past or forget where you came from or forget your foundation. That, even though we read that, and, 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 and again, I know a lot of things and we, we should take in the Bible as literal, but we really have to look into the context to look into some things kind of behind the scenes, the writer, what was going on at that particular time. Nothing was saying forget where you came from. Nothing was saying forget everything in the past, but I do believe what the writer was saying is it's okay to look back there, it's okay to see it, it's okay to live it uh, in, in a sense or relive sometimes, but, but don't dwell there, don't get stuck there. Don't, don't allow what was behind you to become where you continue to live your life in your thoughts and in that process. Don't stay there because something new is happening. God says I'm about to change some things. Making something new requires change. Having something new means something has changed. You buy a new car, what you're driving has changed. If you buy a new house, where you're living has changed. If you add a baby to your family, something has definitely changed. It's changed. God says, I'm about to change some things. New things happen all the time. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And I really like the word begun here. Because it means it started. That doesn't mean it ended. It is a beginning. It is something that is a process. That new life that begins in that moment does not stay in that moment. Does that make sense? When we accept Christ as our personal Savior, it begins that journey. But it will never stay the exact same. It can't. It's impossible. Because we're always changing. As people, we change. We, we do. Now, again, the foundation of who we are and the principles that are inside of us and that makeup that God gives us, will, that's, that's who we are. But in our lives, we change. All we have to do to know that that's true is go look in a mirror. That's all we have to do. Change. Change. Now, it's one thing to plan for change. It's one thing to lay some things out and begin to plan for things that will be different. It's something totally different when change is unexpected. And that's where I want to, to really stick at today. We're going to focus on that and in a crazy kind of way, maybe even celebrate that. And notice I didn't say love it, like it. But we can celebrate things in our lives that we don't necessarily like. And maybe the term celebration and the word celebration after today will be different. Maybe just how we see that. Because I think we say celebration and we, we picture this joyous, just everything's perfect, wonderful world. But with God, we can find a way. And yes, it might be different. And yes, it might hurt. There might be pain involved. Maybe even a little bit of suffering involved. 
but we can find a way to trust God and His plan. Today will be, for those of you that have experienced change like this, that are experiencing change like this, and for those that haven't yet, but will one day experience change like this. Something's gone a little bit different than maybe you thought it would, and you've had a change of plans. I've had this happen many times in my life, many times in my life, but one time in particular where I had planned out so much in my life. Lacey and I were married. Things were great. I had four beautiful children. I had it planned when my daughter was graduating and out of my house I had it planned what I was going to be doing when that happened. It was laid out. But how many people know that God's plan trumps ours? And on one morning, while I'm thousands of miles away, My wife used wisdom and made the phone call. I'm assuming it was wisdom. I don't know how I would have reacted in person. But I remember the phone call. Now, back in those days when we went to Nicaragua, you had to kind of battle for phone time, and it didn't work all the time. And when it did work, there was this long pause delay. You remember the delay when we were talking? And like you would speak, and it would be several seconds before the person on the other end of the line would hear you. And all I remember Lacey saying was, I'm pregnant. And a long pause. Oh, it was bad. I'm just being honest. I was, I was excited, but I was, there was just so much. It's just like my world had been rocked. I had all this planned out. And it's just like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm older and, and I, I will be older. And, and, and no. And I remember walking out, I was bawling. And when I say bawling, I mean bawling. I was. When I walked out, I remember when I walked out of our little, oh, it was in the morning, we were fixing to have our devotion before our team left for the day. And Buddy thought someone had died. Buddy Boyd, he was with us. I said, dude, what, what happened? What, what happened? He came up. I remember him and he was shaking. And I was just bawling. I said, Lazy's pregnant. <laughs> Immediately, he hits the floor. <laughs> I don't know. I had four or five days left in the trip to, to just kind of think about it. And so I'd gotten home, and I was like, you know what, God? Okay. All right, God. You just, you're great. You just sense of humor. <laughs> and And... We had to do an ultrasound really quick. Lacey'd had some medical issues and some different things. And so I, I wasn't home for just, what, a week when we went or something like that? I didn't doesn't matter because um, so we show up and everything's good. And I had replanned everything. <laughs> I did. I just replanned everything. I fixed it in my mind. I'm like, okay, we can do this and this. I'm going to be fine. And now I'm going to be this old and all these... And so there we are in this little room and doing that ultrasound, and the nurse comes in, and and it's just it's immediate. She sticks that little thing on her belly, and boom, two peanuts. (laughs) It was just there. And I'm in the chair, and Lacey's laying over there, and I don't know. The nurse giggled, or she didn't know. None of us knew. But you knew right then. I didn't have to be a doctor or somebody to read the thing. It was right there. And I remember she took it off her stomach, and and it was like this screen. And I was like, okay, do this again, please. That had to be something wrong. (laughs) And in my mind, that's what I'm thinking. And and then all of a sudden, she sticks that back on there. And there they are. And there's this other nurse, and she's in there. And this is, I swear it's a true story. And I could just feel the room shrinking. (laughs) 
And I was going down. And this lady walks over and she kind of touches me and lifts me up. She says, honey, are you, are you okay? You know, are you, I, no, I'm not okay. <laughs> and God changed my plans. And I'm so glad that he did. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that simply based on the number of people that I'm talking to this morning, that many of you right now, you're facing something that you didn't plan. Maybe you're having to search for a job or you're facing an illness or a loss, a broken relationship. Your car broke down, the dryer kept working, and it's Christmas. And how am I going to fix all this stuff and still buy gifts for my kids? It could be anything. And again, whenever we face things that we didn't plan, for some, you know, well, really for most, it rattles our faith, doesn't it? It rattles our faith in that moment and just kind of shakes us. In, let's be real. We're going to be really real today, by the way. This isn't what I had planned. God, where are you? Why are you allowing this to happen to me? God, I said yes to you. God, I follow you. God, I do everything that I can to do everything that you want me to do. God, why? That's the universal question, right? Why? Why? So today we're going to look at some verses in Matthew chapter 1. And we're going to talk about the mother and father of Jesus. Something I think that we need to understand about the Bible, and I really want us to do today. Remember, I prayed before I prayed a while ago. I want your hearts and your minds to be open today. The people in the Bible were real people. Real, real people. I think sometimes we open the Bible and we read these stories in the Bible that are just absolutely, truly amazing and life changing. But it's just like for some reason we just kind of put them in a different place or on a different level. Now, Jesus should be there, but these other, it's just like we think, oh, well, it's almost like we dehumanize them in that moment or dehumanize them in that story. Mary and Joseph were real people. Can we agree on that? We can also read about them in this story in Luke chapter 1, chapter 2. And By the way, go home and read all of Matthew chapter 1. That's your reading assignment this week. So if you think we know a little bit about them, we do, we know. But there are so many things that happen in this story that we don't know, right? I mean, really think about it. There's, there, there has to be so many things in this story that we do not know. For example, if you summarize the points of your life in three paragraphs, if you were to take your life and summarize the high points of your life in three paragraphs, how much more is not included? How much more is there to that story? Detail after detail after detail. And so what I want to do today is just kind of imagine together about some of the details that we don't have access to. For example, how did Mary and Joseph even meet? They had to meet somewhere. We know that. There had to be something that occurred to cause that relationship to begin, it had to happen. Now, it's not, we don't read about it. it, it's not there. We don't have that recorded in the Gospels, but somehow they met. And remember, they were real people. So I want you to stay with me today. I just want you to stay with me as we think. You guys know me. If you've been around me long enough to know, I love to read between the lines, I love to imagine things and think things. And now I'm not adding to the Bible. Just throw that out the window. I'm not going to add anything, take away anything. I'm nothing like that. We're just going to take some things that we do know. We're going to add in the reality that they were real people. It was a real mama and a real daddy. And we're just going to look at a few things about this story this morning. So how did they meet? Well, let's just for the sake of saying, pretend that it was a Wednesday night 
and Mary was going to youth group. And she shows up, yeah. Let's just, for, for the sake of saying, you'll get where I'm going when I'm done, I promise. And she shows up at youth group, and in walks this good-looking boy. Some of you are laughing and smiling because that may be where you met your spouse. And maybe she saw him from across the room. And maybe your heart fluttered. And maybe she thought in her mind, there's no way. But there's a chance. I don't know, just maybe, just maybe they had to meet somehow. And then after youth group, all of a sudden he comes over and starts talking to her. And they begin a relationship. And in the middle of this conversation, she finds out that he actually already has a job. Which is a big thing. He makes furniture. Works with wood. Creates things. And again in her mind, maybe she's thinking, this is just too good to be true. He's good looking and he has money. Well, he was interested. In fact, all week long, maybe he's praying and think about how it will go next week at youth. He gets the nerve up and he puts a couple squirts of cologne, maybe four or five. (laughs) And afterwards, he asks her out for coffee. She's excited, and she doesn't want to seem overexcited, but is this like a friend coffee date, or is this, no, this is more, I kind of like you. It happened somehow. They were real people. And so anyways, the journey began. Sitting across from each other, they hit it off, and then they would go and do something else, and then go and do something else, and before too long, she met his parents, and He met her parents, and they really like each other. And then one day, every love song on the radio starts to make sense. She tells it it's going somewhere. She has no idea that he saved up all of this money for making this furniture to buy her a big rock. And then in that moment, that special moment, he plans this all out. And finally pops that question and, you know, leading up to it, she was like, oh, I hope this is it. I hope this is it. I hope this is it. And then it finally is. And it's just, she, she wants to be calm and she wants to be, I'm closing my eyes because I'm picturing this. She wants to be reserved, but in that moment she can't be because she loves this man. And of course she says yes. Now, those of you that have been through some of this and some of that and some of that picture, What do we do in that moment? We immediately start planning the rest of our lives. Right? We start planning our wedding. We start planning what it's going to look like. We start planning where we're going to live and the jobs we're going to have and how much money that we think we're going to have when in reality you find out 20 years later that never happens. How many kids that we're going to have and we're going to name them this and we're going to name them that and we plan and we plan and we plan and we lay all of this out. Because we're in love, right? And, and we, when we see that and we want to plan, we, we, we want it just to be, to be really awesome. Maybe they were planning someday to buy a house. They are crazy in love with each other. They, this is what they did. And, or at least they were like us, they would. Now, we don't know the details of their plans, but we do know this. We know that they decided to wait before sharing intimacy until they got married. We know that. Young people, that's a phenomenal thing to follow. That's a side note, free sermon. Just take it for what it is. True love really does wait. Let me just throw this in there. If 
maybe you've made the mistake and say, I can't get that back. Maybe not a part of it. Let me tell you this. You commit yourself to God in this moment right now. Right now. God does amazing things. Okay. Back to this sermon. So they go through all of this stuff, maybe, just maybe, making plans. And then one day, Mary's off by herself. She has the most special and holy encounter with God. Because see, Mary loved God. Mary loved God. She loved Joseph, but she loved God. And so this angel shows up out of nowhere in the middle of her plans and says, you've been chosen. You're going to have a son. She was like, you haven't heard, uh, like Joey and I, we're, just, we're not, uh, uh, no way. He said, oh yeah. He said, yes way. Angel said, this son is the son of God. This son you will conceive by the Holy Spirit. You can only imagine this little girl who loves God and is also in love with Joseph and she's planning on getting married and here God has chosen them to be a part of history. I don't know, maybe just maybe she's thinking to herself, I can't wait to tell Joseph. He's going to be excited. God has chosen us. And so she goes and she tells Joseph that she's pregnant. So let's take a vote. Is Joseph excited or is he freaking out? Remember, they're real people. Now we can also kind of look in and see and say that he's freaking out because they are real people. So let's look at this. And again, we're reading between the lines, but let's go. Let, let, let's Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. It says, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. Somewhere in that they met, some things happened, and here they are. They are engaged to be married. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. They had a plan, but God blew their plan up. Can we agree on that? And she goes off to tell, and tells Joseph, hey, I'm pregnant. It was the Holy Spirit. And we don't really know how he responds, but we do know that more than likely, he's hurt, frustrated, upset. Because we see this in verse 19, because Joseph, her husband, who was faithful to the law and yet didn't want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in his mind to divorce her quietly. Boy, most of the time we read this story, regardless of where we read it, we just blitz right past that, don't we? He had in his mind to divorce her. He's devastated. Brokenhearted. Now, maybe the question arises, but they weren't married, Pastor Ron. How can... What divorce? They're, they're not even married yet. But culturally in their day, if you were engaged to marry someone else, the only way to break that engagement was to go through an official divorce. That was it. And who knows, probably in that day, divorce was looked at in a whole different light than it is today. In fact, we can prove that through Scripture as well. It was not looked up on at all. Not only would she be shamed, but he would be as well. So he had to, and what they, they got rid of it. Just kick him out. And that person was disgraced and thrown to the side and, and, and just basically outcast. She would have been outcast. Now can you imagine what's going on? Remember, they're real people. Fears, uncertainties, thoughts, all of this stuff. And divorce in itself, they use the divorce word. Divorce isn't easy. It's never easy. It comes with brokenness and all of these. It, it, it's not easy. So it's just this word. It's, just, it's not something to just blitz past. There was something happening in this moment. And Joseph's like, I'm trying to serve God and now I'm going to be divorced. And, and we look at it from both perspectives. 
Because when the angel appeared to her, according to Luke chapter 1, verse 38, Mary said, may it be done unto me according to your word. She had made that decision in that moment because she loved God. Whatever you say, God, whatever you say. Could she have ever imagined in her wildest dreams that she would be here in that moment? I see you're thinking, that's good. If she were living today, she would say something like, I love God with all of my heart and I will do whatever He wants me to do. Isn't that what we preach and say all the time? Isn't it? Boy, it's so easy to say that, isn't it? But it gets really hard to live that sometimes, doesn't it? God, I love you with everything that I am and I'll do whatever you want me to do. And then God changes our plans. And we're like, except that. Because God, that, that doesn't fit with where I want to go. And that doesn't fit with what I've planned. That's going to be really hard. And, and that's going to hurt a lot. And there's going to be a lot of pain that goes along with that, God. And, and I'm not doing that. I just don't want to do that. Right? Come on, let's be honest and be real. Because now here's Mary in this moment, pregnant without a husband... He's quietly thinking about divorcing her. And in this culture, oh my gosh, she'll just be ripped apart. In some ways, if you stop at this point, someone, if you stopped right there at that verse, and that was the end of the story, you could really read into it and say, this, was, this is it. This change. This isn't what I planned. And this is exactly where some of you, and maybe you're there right now, maybe you've been there, you understand. Maybe it will be where some of you will be in the future, even myself. This isn't what I planned, and I don't know what it may be for you, but maybe you were finally getting ahead financially, and you're going to have a great Christmas, and like I said earlier, your car breaks down, and it's hundreds of dollars, and you just don't know what you're going to do, because you've got to have your car, and you've got to get to work, and I didn't plan for this to happen, and it just boom. Or maybe you poured your life into your kids and, man, it was everything and you just poured and you poured and you poured and you invested and everything you did was for your kids and now they're making decisions and you're looking and going, what are you doing? This isn't what, 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 what I promised. This isn't what I, what I did. This isn't how I raised you, God. This isn't how it's supposed to be. This isn't how I plan for things to happen. Maybe you took a job and you did this for your family. You knew it was a better job and better pay, a chance for promotion, a chance to move up. And then the economy downturned and the company downside. You were last in, first out. So many things. The list could go on and on. I didn't plan to have migraines. I didn't plan to battle depression. I didn't plan to lose my scholarship. I didn't plan on this accident. I didn't plan to get hurt. I didn't plan on any of this. God, what are you doing? This isn't what I planned. And with that being said... This is something that we all have to embrace at some particular point in time in our life, and it's this. You don't have to understand the plan to trust God has a purpose. You don't have to understand the plan to trust God has a purpose. Man, that's another thing that's hard to say. You don't have to understand the plan to trust God has a purpose. Man, that is so hard sometimes to, to look at that and then to look at things in our own lives or things that we... It's like, really? Really? Proverbs 19.21 says, many are the plans in a person's heart. Many are our plans. We work at those. We work at those. But it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Many are our plans. Many are the things that we plan to do. Many are the things that we have laid out. But it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. So here's Mary and Joseph. Joseph determines that he had no choice but to quietly divorce her. So he considers this. And then in verse 20, but after Joseph had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So there's that own moment where God shows up in Joseph's life in the middle of all his confusion, in the middle of whatever he's thinking, and God shows up and speaks definitively. And then in verse 21, verse 21 shows us the purpose, by the way. It says, she will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus. Why? Because he will save his people from their sins. That is the purpose. That is the purpose. You don't have to understand the plan to trust God has a purpose. 
Can you almost imagine Joseph just going, wait, 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 wait. You're telling me God's in on this? Whoa, 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 really? I mean, I, I can just sit there and think about that. You're telling me that the last thing that I ever wanted is exactly what God wanted to happen? This gets tough. You mean there's a purpose in the middle of my pain? You can almost hear God whispering to him, my thoughts are so much different than your thoughts, and my ways are higher than your ways. Because we can't get there intellectually. We can't get to the place that we're God's thoughts and His purpose. We just cannot get there. We can't. So that makes it even harder for us to, to understand. And he says, I'm working in all things to bring about good to those who love me and are called according to my purpose. Sometimes God may even redirect our plans when He has a different purpose. We don't have to understand the plan to trust God has a purpose. If I asked all of you to look back into your lives and your past, we could all find times where we were like, God, really? Really, God? Really? Is that just, God, is that happening right now? Really? But God, I said yes. God, I said yes. You asked me to do it. I said yes. I'm doing what you asked me to do. God, really? Really? Oh. This isn't what I planned. God, I want it to be this way. God, I loved your plan of a new house and a new community. Hoping to leave a growing and lead a growing and thriving church. God, we're building. I make good money. They pay the insurance for all of my family. I've made great friends. I love what I'm doing. I haven't been here long enough. Ugh. God, I don't want to leave my best friend. God, we plan to do this, and we plan to do this, and we plan to do this, and God, all, look at all this stuff that's going on, and it's working, and God, people are being saved, and all of this stuff is happening, and He knows what I'm thinking, and I know what He's thinking, and, and it's just we mesh so well together, and God, You've spoke over us. God, I don't, I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to leave. Let's be honest, when God's plans interrupt our, our plans, it hurts. But looking back at all those times, I could have never seen this plan. I couldn't have seen it. Would have never dreamed it. And a lot of you could say the exact same thing. You think Mary and Joseph, before those angels showed up, ever, ever dreamed do you think she ever dreamed about being the mama of Jesus? Think about that. Get Dive inside of the story. Don't just read it on the page. Do you ever think in her mind? She thought one day I'm going to be the mama to Jesus, the son of God. years later you can look back and you can say man I'd never choose it or I'd never want to go through it again but I can see how God used it oh I've shared this before and I, I, I wasn't going to share this I shared it with the team last night and, and I thought well, that's where God wants me to share because it kind of been on my heart but I, I never choose it or I'd never want to go through it again but I can see how God used it that's basically a quote. The one and only time I've ever heard my father preach. And for him to stand there and, and say, I, I wished I would have never lost my daughter. I could go back and change it all but then in the very next breath my God wrote this down it is in my Bible he said he said but I would have never become the man I am today I, I don't get that I, I don't I don't get I don't get that I don't want to have to get that 
but all are respected. Think about this. Mary was pregnant with the Son of God. If I'm Joseph, Joseph, I'm thinking, man, this is from God. This is good. We got connections. This is going to go smooth. Heavenly epidural, no pain, totally free. But she's in labor on the back of a donkey. And they get to town and no place to go. And she gives birth in a cave next to farm animals. You really think that's how she planned to have her first baby? and the baby's born and maybe you think okay they're going to live happy ever, ever after but immediately she finds out that King Herod wants to kill her son think about this internalize this she is a real mother and someone wants to kill the baby that she just gave birth to mama's in the house you're rising up amen you are rising up and you will do whatever it takes to protect your baby this was a real mama ruler of the country wants your kid dead but God I said yes to you and now I'm on the run really seriously so they head to Egypt they're hiding out in houses don't tell anybody we're here and then fast forward 33 years oh this is what gets me Mary the mama who said yes may it be done unto me according to your word God you know I love you I'll do whatever you ask me to do she's standing on right there looking at her son who had been beaten and whipped and ripped and torn his intestines are probably hanging out he's hanging on a cross with spikes in his hand his hands and his feet and there is his mama right there watching it if that does not make something inside of you shudder then I say uh, you need to check some things his mama having to watch this that is real the same woman that said yes God I'll do whatever you ask me to do when everything was all exciting and new and and scary and just all of this stuff she did not plan to have to be there in that moment oh It's not recorded what she thinks or she says, but I think you probably could all paint the picture. No mama should ever have to see that. And there he is hanging and people are spitting on him and mocking him. You saved others, saved yourselves. And then all of a sudden Jesus looks up and prays, Father, please forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And as she's looking on her son who is righteous in every way, declares with faith and with passion through pain and through agony that it is finished. That it's finished. And then he breathes his last breath and says into your hands I commit my spirit and the earth, the, 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 the earth goes dark and everything shakes. These are real people. This is a real mom and a real dad Mary and Joseph had a plan but God had a purpose Mary and Joseph might have had a plan but God had a purpose we may have a plan but God's have a purpose and, and you said well what, what is that purpose I told you what it was in scripture just a little bit ago and the purpose was you the purpose was you Was me. Mary and Joseph didn't see that. When she said yes, she didn't see that. She didn't see you. She didn't see me. She just said yes. And everything that they went through, she didn't see that. She saw her son. And that day when he was crucified, she didn't see us, she saw him. 
That wasn't in the plan. Not in her plan, but it was in God's plan. It was in His plan. The purpose was you. People see all the time that Jesus is the reason for the season. And, 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 and He is when we talk about Christmas. But if you ask God what the reason for the season was in His heart, it was you. It was you. That was the reason Jesus came. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. For who? For you. You can't make this story up. It, it's, it's not a, I mean, you can't. You just can't make this stuff up. Isn't it so? I mean, it's just, it's that awesome. Man had a plan of how the Messiah would come. God blew that out of the water, didn't he? God had a purpose that he would be stripped of his righteousness in heaven and become a person in Jesus who was born of a virgin. Why did a virgin matter? I love this. Because he didn't inherit the sin nature from an earthly father, but instead the divine nature from a heavenly father. Does that make sense? He was perfect. Not conceived of man, but given by God. So the nature that he took on was not man's nature, which was a sinful nature. The nature that he maintained was directly from his father. That's why that is important. Perfect in every way, never sinning, dying on the cross for who? For you, for me, for us. We were the purpose. And yet so many people miss it. I want to go back and read verse 21 one more time. Mary will give birth to a son and you will give him the name Jesus. Why? Because God had a purpose. You were that purpose because Jesus will save his people from his sins. So today, if you're one of those people who have had a change in plans, and maybe right now things are really difficult, and I'm not going to tell you for a moment that your pain is not real, or the things that you're going through today is not real, or the pain that you have felt in the past is not real. I am not going to say it. I'm not going to diminish it. I'm not going to put it down because it is real, and it shouldn't be. It is real in our lives. And I don't care where you are or what situation you're going through. It is real in your moment right now. Yes, there's always someone that's going through something worse, but our storms are our storms. Amen? My mama said it, so I believe it. I just... We go through some tough stuff in life, don't we? Stuff that we never want to have to go through. Never want to have to experience. Stuff that just rattles our plans. But God says, I have a purpose. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but the Lord's purpose that prevails. And I'm going to tell you right now, because of the goodness of God, because of His sovereignty, and because of who He is, we don't have to understand the plan to trust that God has a purpose. And that purpose is you. That was tough. It was tough to preach. It was tough to study for, just to be really honest with you. Because it's not your happy, feel-good kind of Christmas message. But if God got you through it once, He'll get it through you again. He will get you through it again. Again. 